Years before, he had turned to propofol, a powerful anesthetic, as a drastic measure to get to sleep. Jackson called it his milk. Murray admits that he first gave Jackson propofol only after becoming his personal physician. He spoke as if because of this current concept, he needed to head sleep so he can compose properly, be ready for the performances, and this was only because of the, this is a concept. Days before Michael's death, Murray recalls how Jackson's craving for sleep intensified. He said, I want 15 to 18 hours of sleep. That's what most doctors give me. Give me 10 minutes. Give me 20 minutes. And I said to him, why would 10 minutes help you? Because it makes sense. How would 20 minutes make a difference? Oh, it will, it will, it really, it really helps me. It doesn't, I can really, you know, I'm composing. I'm at this stage of, of the production. By week three of the trial, the testimony of the prosecution's expert witnesses is devastating. He's in propofol for the management of, of insomnia, and um, it's, it's inconceivable. In 2009, Murray gave a statement to the police in which he set out how he used propofol with Jackson. The prosecution's interpretation of this statement is hotly contested by the defense, but Michael Flanagan is struggling to make any headway. Never said he gave a drip. I disagree with you. He gave a drip, it says here. Dr. Murray goes, the dose and the drip. Line 22, he says it. This is about that night. Same dose and drip. Flanagan gotta wake up. He needs a lot of coffee and some Pitbull or Red Bull. Go out the left and get the storm. Didn't you understand that to be referring to what he had handled before? Fine. No, I don't I don't see it that way. This is why I say I'm available. Ask me questions. I am the source. Talk to me. Spend time with me. Get to understand it. I'm available. So when you're bugging, you're fumbling around like that, of course it pisses me off. Today. I probably should have controlled them a little bit better. I've tried a lot of jury trials, but I'll tell you right now, I've never lost a case in, in which I felt my client was certifiably innocent. This can be the first. Yeah. of Michael Jackson is submitted as evidence of his well-being. It was recorded after the crisis meeting at Michael's house, and according to the doctor, after he had started weaning the pop star off his reliance on propofol. Two nights before Michael's death, Murray states he finally got Jackson to sleep without administering any of the drug. Jackson's performances in those final days were a transformation. He entered into rehearsal full of energy, full of desire to work, full of enthusiasm, and uh, it was a different Michael. We had two very successful days of rehearsal. Michael was feeling great, and he looked at me, and he asked me if I was happy, and I said I was happy, and I asked him if he was happy, and he said he was very happy. As you now know, he never returned to Staples Center. Following that rehearsal, Michael was taken home and he arrived home at about one o'clock in the morning. The question becomes what transpired then from one o'clock in the morning to Michael's death? It had been another good rehearsal. Jackson was excited, but needed to sleep. At approximately 2 a.m., Murray says he administered some Valium and Lorazepam, but refused to give him propofol. At 3 a.m., the doctor gave him medazolam. Jackson still didn't go to sleep. Hours passed. He was basically hysterical. He really could not sleep. And he begged and pleaded and asked me, please, please, Dr. Conrad, um, I need some milk so that I can sleep. If I don't get any sleep today, I could not perform. I could not do anything. AJ will be upset. 
everything will basically go down the drain. He looked to me during that morning to be like a thriller. Have you ever seen the thriller image that when he was made up? He looked that hysterical. Now, I did not want